In his book, The History of Cornwall, published in 1959, the Cornish historian Frank Halliday pointed out that a journey from London to Land's End was a journey back in geological time, with each mile equal to a million years. It's also a journey back into the time of our ancestors. Some of the oldest rocks in Britain are to be found in the west of Cornwall. These massive extrusions of granite were pushed up through the surface strata some 300 million years ago. When the softer surrounding strata weathered away, granite plateaus and bosses were revealed. Here in Mount Space, St Michael's Mount is built on one of those granite plugs poking up through the surrounding slate beds. Its spectacular setting is only matched by its history, the earliest written record of which would appear to be that of the first century Greek historian Diodorus Siculus. He writes of a part of Britain called Beleriand, of the tin workings and how the metal was smelted and carried by the natives to an island off the coast called Ictis, where, during the ebb of the tide, the ground is left dry and they carry over into the island the tin in abundance in their wagons. Diodorus further writes that the inhabitants are very fond of strangers and, owing to their intercourse with merchants, civilised in their manners. Proof, without a shadow of a doubt, that it must have been Cornwall. The moorland of West Cornwall is a place of deep secrets, an ancient landscape of mystery and magic. Grey recumbent tombs of the dead in desert places, standing stones on the vacant wine-red moor, hills of sheep and homes of the silent races, and winds austere and pure. Robert Louis Stevenson may not have been writing specifically about Cornwall, but the flow of his poetry perfectly captures this enigmatic landscape. When you walk the Cornish moors, there's a real sense of being in touch with prehistoric man, of being close to the ancient people, the builders of such mysterious monuments as this, the men and toll. The name comes from the Cornish Mayon, meaning stone, and toll, meaning hole, though it is also known as the Crick Stone for its reputed healing powers. Children with rickets were passed through the stone nine times against the sun as a cure for the disease, while adults clambered through to rid themselves of lumbago or sciatica. Just a few miles away across the moor, another extraordinary stone monument stands proud against the skyline, the Lanyon Coit. The Coit is the largest and one of the most perfect examples of its kind, and all that remains are a megalithic chambered long barrow dating from about 2,000 years before Christ. The huge 13 and a half ton capstan is supported by three pillars, the overall shape resembling a table and hence its local name, the Giant's Table. Legend says that King Arthur dined at this site on the eve of his last battle. At the gathering, Merlin predicted that Arthur and his chieftains would gather here again just before the end of the world. Nobody about at the minute. Looks like we're safe. Let's continue our journey even further westwards and further back in time. Close to the village of St Just on the rugged cliff edge of Cape Cornwall is one of the largest and most unique examples of a prehistoric cairn. The Larwall Barrow has a long and complex history as a sacred site and incorporates multiple phases of use and funerary practice spanning the Neolithic and Middle Bronze Age periods. 
The barrow was for many years concealed beneath the spoilage of the adjacent tin mine until, in the late 18th century, William Copeland Borlase, the great-great-grandson of the Cornwall historian William Borlase, was drawn here after hearing miners' tales of weird lights and piskies. When finally excavated in 1878, the barrow revealed that within the structure are a large number of kists or burial chambers containing cremated bones and pottery, the earliest of which date from 3,000 years BC. Signs of cremation and human remains from this period are extremely rare in Cornwall, and the sheer size of this monument and its location, overlooking the ocean and facing the setting sun, conveys a deep feeling of power and of mystery. That the ancient places we visited today have survived natural erosion and the onslaught of man and machine is a testament to the skills of the people who built them and the awe with which we regard them. Long may they remain. <laughs>